Hi there, this is Amish from Pixim Perfect and today we're going to be looking into a feature that allows you to create various kinds of light effects in Photoshop. Also in the tutorial, we will learn how to create realistic shadows to go with the lighting. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and this video is divided into sections. So if you want to go ahead and skip to any section that you like, you can use these timestamps. So by the way, this photo is available for download. So you can check the links in the description to be able to download them in case you want to follow along. So the first thing that we have to do here is to create or add the light. And to be able to do that, first of all, let's make a copy of the background layer. Press Ctrl or Command J. Now we want it to be non-destructive. By non-destructive, I mean that we need to be able to have the ability to be able to change the lights later or change the position or the softness or the hardness or whatever there is. Okay, so layer one and we can name this light or light or let's name it subject with light. Now we will go to filter and then convert for smart filters. This converts this into a smart object. Hit OK. Then this is the most important filter that we will be talking about today in depth and that is filter, render and then lighting effects. It's just right there inside of the filter menu. So we're going to click on a lighting effect. It's going to open a whole new dialog box. Now I had created this light before, so it already shows me what there is. So I just wanted to discuss with you the kinds of lights that we have here. We have three kinds. Point. We have the point light, which is just an area of light that you can move around. So there you go. You can move around the light here and there, just like a point light. You can decrease the intensity if you want to increase the intensity if you want to. And there are a lot of things that we can do here. It's just a point of light, decrease the ambient lighting, just a simple point of light, an area of light. The other one that we have here is, as you can see, is the spotlight that we had by default. So this is the spotlight. And the next one here is, as you can see, is infinite light. So unlike point light or spotlight, the infinite light falls all over your image. It is directional though. So you can change the direction of infinite light from there to there and you can control the intensity as usual, just like this. But for this image, we're going to use the spotlight. Also keep in mind, as you can see, the color of light is yellow because I had set that before. So you can change the color as well. All right. So let's first of all, select spotlight. Okay. Now you can choose the color to whatever color you like. You can click here. I had chosen a little bit of yellow color over there. Let me just mute my computer. Sounds funky. Okay, so you can choose white. Usually white is a good color to choose. So we can choose white and it will be white. Just like this. Yellow would look great on this. First of all, let's just adjust it. And to be able to do that simple, just drag it and adjust it in shapes you want. So I'm going to keep it that way. It looks pretty good. I'm going to make it a little bigger. Drag from the sides. Very simple. Now you can control the hotspot size. See the inside circle? Circle, just decrease it. It's kind of too much. So I'm going to make it a little smaller and maybe let's make the things a little bigger. Let's zoom out a little bit. Okay. And let's make the spotlight very big. Just like so. And we're going to move it right there. And let's move the, make the hot spot a little bigger. Okay. It looks pretty good. And just like so. Probably we should just Make it a little more interesting. Looks good. And you can also make it even bigger to add much more softness to it. I absolutely love it. Now you can change the color to whatever you like. So let's zoom back in. Control or command plus to zoom back in. Good. Now we're going to make the hotspot a little smaller to add much more softness to it. Just like so. Okay. So click on the color to be able to change it. And we're going to choose something like yellow. So choose hue from here to get the same thing as we get in color picker. And then let's choose yellow ish, orange ish color. And we're going to just select that color. But as you can see, it's very saturated. So you can just take it to the left to decrease the saturation, or you can go to the S which stands for saturation and simply decrease it just like this. If you think it's too saturated. I think this is a good number to be at and I'm going to stop at that. I think the intensity is too much. So let's decrease the intensity. So this slider controls the intensity of the light. So let's decrease it. Yes, this is fine. I'm kind of happy with this. Now this slider 
controls the ambient lighting, right? The lighting other than this light, okay? So if we decrease it all the way to the left, any lights other than this light goes completely black. If you take it all the way to the right, every light turns on along with this light. So we're gonna just find a better number to go for. So for us, I guess four is okay. Now you can play with these sliders called metallic, gloss and exposure. So metallic just makes it a little more metallic. I think it looks good. Gloss, do you want gloss? No, I'm gonna keep it at that. And you can play with this to see which one works good for your image. And then have a look at this one. This one is for exposure the overall exposure of the image. This is a very important slider. You can also control the color of exposure. I'm gonna keep it at that, but we can try different colors. Let's choose hue. Probably let's go with blue. It kind of helps us soften the stuff. So blue is okay here. Now, once you're already adjusting all your lights and stuff, all you have to do, just hit okay. And as you can see, it's done. Now, if you want to adjust anything, if you think you've gone wrong or you want to adjust the softness, in this case, I want to increase the ambient light a little bit. You can also go back to it. Since we converted it into a smart object, we can double click on lighting effects and we can go back to it. Now, once we go back, we can control whatever we want. So let's increase the ambient lighting. Now, as we increase the ambient lighting, have a look, the ambient lighting is going blue. Why is it going blue? Because we chose blue here. So let's choose something like orangish. So that's the importance of this colorize. So we can also choose blue because on the outside it might have been a little bluish. Blue is not bad. So choose a little bit of blue. It gives us a little contrast. And then let's decrease the ambient light a little bit. Probably I'll decrease the hotspot just like this to add more softness and then hit OK. It looks much more better to me now. Now, I want you to look at this image very carefully. If we look at the ambient light sections, it adds the blue lights of the evening and the spotlight adds the warm yellow light. It's necessary that we make the light as realistic as possible. Now, once we have added the light, the second step would be to add the shadow. And to be able to do that, we need to make a selection of the subject. So for now, we don't need it. We can turn this off just like this and we can get back to the background. Now, once we are in the background, you can choose any method to select her. So I'm going to choose the select subject. It, it's very quick. So choose the quick selection tool right over there. And at the top, you will see select subject. So I'm going to click on select subject. It will take a while and Photoshop does its maths and artificial intelligence. And it did a pretty awesome job. Not excellent, but really good. Now you can go back to the quick selection tool and you can subtract the areas that is not the subject. So with the brush selected, the quick selection tool brush, you can hold the Alt or Option to turn it into minus and just select the areas that you don't want. And you don't want the selection to be very accurate. You don't have to work so hard at it, but if you have the time, go for it. So this is extra. Hold the Alt or Option and paint over there. Hold the Alt or Option and paint over here as well. You don't have to be too worried about this area. This is pretty okay. And let's do it here as well, carefully. Guys, I'm doing a very quick job. You can take your time and do it. Okay, now you can also do this. You can also press the letter Q. This takes you into the quick mask mode. Now, whatever is red, that area is not selected. Whatever is in its original color, that area is selected. Now you can paint with a brush. If you paint with black, have a look. Let me make the brush a little softer. At this point, if you paint with black, we are deleting that area, which means that that area is not going to be selected. If you paint with white, if you change the foreground color to white by pressing X to toggle between the foreground and the background, and then when you paint it, that area is going to be included. So you can use this to be able to use the brush with the selection. And I'm going to refine it. You don't have to be super accurate. This is okay. Now, once you're done with a quick mask mode, you can press Q again, it gets you back to the selection. Everything looking pretty good. Now we want to save this selection because we might need this later. So go to select and then save selection. And we can name this subject and it will be saved in a new channel. Hit OK. Now while creating the shadow to avoid funky edges, we're going to do something unusual. We will create the shadow above the subject. Make sense? 
No, it will make sense later. All right, so now I want you to turn this on. Selection is still active. I want you to turn the light thing on. And above that, I want you to create a new layer. Now with the selection active, I want you to fill black into that. So make sure the foreground color is absolutely black and then press Option Delete. On a Windows, that would be Alt Backspace. So when you press that, that area in that layer will be filled in black. Press Control or Command D to deselect or let go of the selection. Now I want you to arrange the shadow according to the light. And to be able to do that, press Control or Command D for the transformation tool. Now zoom out okay hold the control or command and then adjust the edges this allows you to distort now follow the curvature of the light and we are creating just the shadow i'm gonna keep it something like this this looks much more realistic and uh, yeah it's good now you can drag it if you want to but i'm gonna keep it at that this looks pretty nice to me and once you're satisfied with the shadow, hit enter or return. Remember we saved the selection? It's going to be helpful now. So go to the channels. Now inside of the channels, there's this subject thing. This is the selection we saved. So hold the control or command and click on the thumbnail of it. That makes a selection of the selection we saved. Now come back to less. With this layer selected, all I want you to do is to click on the mask button. Okay. Now we just have the opposite of what we want. We wanted the shadow to be away from the subject, but we have it on the subject except anywhere else ex except on the wall. So select it and press Ctrl or Command I to invert it. Now you have the shadow according to the light because we followed the curvature of the light. Okay. Now at this point we might have to make a couple changes and we will add some blur to it. Now keep in mind, we cannot simply add a simple Gaussian blur that just would not work. Why? Have a look at this image. Have a look at the light. How blurred is the light? It's not very gradual, right? It's a little hard as compared to here. Here the light edge goes really soft. It's very gradual. Here it just is not very gradual. It's a little harder over here as compared to down there which means that we will have to add a little blur here and much more blur over here, right? And to be able to do that, we will use field blur or tilt shift blur, whatever is your favorite. So let's go to filter. Now inside of filter, we'll go to blur gallery and inside of that, you can use tilt shift, you can use field blur, whatever is your choice. So I'm gonna choose field blur and now I'm gonna move this point over here, okay? Now we're going to increase the blur so that it looks pretty good and realistic. Just like so. This is pretty okay. All right. Now we're going to add one more point down here and add the blur so much so that it matches with that of the light. Okay. The blur of the light. So we're going to move it just like this. Now when we blur it, there's an issue. Let's see what the issue is. Now it's applying the blur. Even the mask has been blurred and it's making the image look funky. We did not want that. Let's go back. Control or Command Z. Okay. Or Control Option Z, Command Option Z. Let's unlink the mask. So click on this link as you can see to unlink the mask and then reapply it. So let's go to filter. You can simply click on blur gallery to reapply the same settings or you can again go to blur gallery and then feel blur. And you can again move this point to the top and add a little bit blur. Now it will look much more realistic. So for this point, I guess this is okay. 35 is fine. Let's add one more point over here. And for this point, we will add a lot of blur, just like so, 220 something. This looks pretty good. Or maybe let's go a little lower. For this one, I think we have gone too far. Let's decrease the values here. This is good. Now, once you're satisfied with the values, just hit OK. Keep in mind, you cannot change this because this is not a smart object. And the reason why we didn't convert it into a smart object is to be able to paint the shadows later. For example, what if you want to paint some extra black over here and there? So in that case, we might not want that. OK, so you can control the opacity if you want to. So you can set it something like this. This looks all right. Now, to be able to adjust it, let's play with the mask. As you can see, it's not very good over there. So let's select the mask, take the brush, 
first of all, let's paint some areas with white and decrease the flow to something like 5%, 10%, 10% is good. And make sure the brush is a soft round brush. Okay. And let's just paint some areas just to make things a little smoother. That's why we have the shadow over the subject so that we can paint some extra areas with shadows. So this area, we can add a little shadow here and there. Okay. And let's do it this side as well. As you can see, jagged edges. Let's fill it up with some shadow. Easy. Just like so. Here as well, we can just add some shadows and call it a day. Let's make the hair a little, you know, this area is looking strange. So we're going to add a little black there. Okay. Everything else is looking pretty good. Maybe add a little shadow over here as well. Now, this area might be looking a little strange. So let's just fill it up with black a little. Okay. Great. It's all looking good. Let's zoom out and have a look. Here's the before, here's the after. So the shadow adds much more depth to it. Also what you can do, you can put the shadow in a group. So press Control or Command G with this shadow layer selector. You can also rename it Shadow, Control or Command G and you can name it Shadow Group. Great. Now for the group, you can also create one more mask. So you can have two masks for the same thing. So you can take the brush, and then make the brush a little bigger and just erase the bottom area with black. So you can select the black and maybe do something like this to make it a much more realistic. As you can see, without the mask, with the mask. You see the difference? So let's go back. I think we have painted a little bit too much. So we can paint a little bit here and there for the ambient light to come in. Just like so. It looks much more better. Now maybe we need to paint a little bit here as well. Let's make the brush a little smaller. This is okay. Let's decrease the flow to around one. No, let's go for 5%. Maybe we'll add a little light over here. Let's add a little light over here as well. So a little bit of brush touch-ups here and there might help you. I think we painted a little too much. Let's go back. Okay, it's looking pretty good. All right. Okay, now let's zoom out. It's looking good, but there is something missing. You know what? So we have added the outer shadow. Have a look at this image. All of the shadow that we have added is outside the subject. So what about the shadows inside the subject? For example, let's have a look. She has a nose, right? And the light is falling from the top. She definitely will have a shadow under the nose, also under this lip, under her chin, right? What about those shadows? Unless we create them, it will look unrealistic. So it's time for us to create the inner shadows. So to be able to do that, let's just close this group. Let's add a curves adjustment layer. And then we will just bring it down just like this. Select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. Now zoom in with the brush selected, very low flow, 4% or something like that. Take the brush make it smaller, make it softer, and just start painting the shadows one by one. So under the glasses here, there'll be a little shadow, paint with white, make sure the foreground color is white, press X to toggle between the foreground and the background, and simply paint over it just like this to create shadow. What I'll do is I'll decrease the flow even more to probably, let's go 3% is good. Now if you paint extra, you can press X again and then paint over it. This looks pretty good. Now zoom out and do, I think it looks good. Okay. Let's add a little shadow over here as well. Now, as we add shadow, as you can see, it's also kind of saturating that particular area. So what do we do to kind of desaturate it? We can try this. We can change the blend mode to luminosity so that it just affects the light. But as you can see, it's making these areas a little desaturated and we don't want that. So let's change the blend mode back to normal. So it's not working. What if we do this? What if we decrease the saturation on those areas? So let's create a hue saturation adjustment layer. Okay. And we will click on this button. It will create a clipping mask and only the areas we paint, the saturation will be decreased in only those areas. Let's go ahead and decrease the saturation a little bit. Maybe let's do this. Let's go to reds and just decrease the saturation of the reds, just like this. And it's working. It's helping. Let's come back to curves, take the brush with the foreground color white and just start 
painting over into these areas. Okay, looking pretty good. Press X again. I think we painted a little extra over there on the sides. Okay, let's add a little shadow over here under the lip. Very little. Okay, let's have a look at the before and after. So here is the before. Here is the after. Because of the light, we added some shadow and it's looking much more convincing. Okay, so let's just adjust it. Now let's add some shadow under the chin. As you can see, I think I've added a little too much shadow over here. So I'm going to change it back to black and probably just paint it. Let's have a look before after. Much better. So change it back to white and let's paint in these areas. Be a little careful. Now since I'm using a pen and a tablet, I'm going to choose the brush soft round pressure opacity and flow that allows me to control the flow and opacity just with the pressure of the pen which means the harder you press the more intense the shadow will be okay so i'm going to select that and let's paint in white let's zoom out sometimes we do a little extra so we're going to change the brush to black and we're going to just get it a little softer Let's see how this is. So here's the before, here's the after. A little bit shadow here and there. So we can add some more shadow. We can change it back to white. And we can add a little shadow that's dragging a little along at the bottom. Let's see how good or bad this is. Wow, this is amazing. It's making it look so much more realistic. Pretty good. Let's zoom out and see. Yeah, I like the shadow. Now, to go with the shadow, we have to add some darkness here and there. Looks good, doesn't it? So we might need to add a little bit here, there. It's pretty good. Now, as I can see there, I have just over darkened a couple areas. So I'm going to change it back to black and just brighten them back in. OK, let's zoom out and have a look. This is pretty good. And let's paint black in because I think I've overdone some areas. OK, let's zoom out and have a look. This is OK. So here's the before, here's the after with the shadow. OK, so let's get back to white and add a little more here. OK, this looks pretty good. I'm kind of happy with this. Let's zoom in and let's adjust it. Now, this is something very time consuming, but it's worth it. Absolutely. Zoom out and check, zoom out and check. Now let's darken a couple of these areas as well. And once you have done that, change it to black and just lighten your darkening effect. Because sometimes, most of the times, we kind of overdo stuff. Okay, this is good. Now let's do it on the hands. This hand is okay. Let's do it here. Okay, all right. So we have done that area, any other area left. So. We want to add a little dimension here as well on her torso. And to be able to do that, see, because the light previously was from the front, it is flat. So we have to add dimension so that it just doesn't look flat. Okay, so we, get, we will just zoom out and add some shadow at the bottom, just like so, from the coat and as her torso bends. Okay, so much more realistic, zoom out. I think we have done a little too much, so we'll change it back to black and just lighten it a little bit. Okay, this looks much better. Now, since the light is fa falling and the jacket is a little shiny, we'll have to add a little shine to the jacket as well. And to do that, let's add one more curves adjustment layer at the top. So click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. Okay, now you'll take this point up just like so. Now, double click on the right hand side of the layer. Take the slider of the underlying layer from left to right. So we are removing the dark areas of the underlying layer or the layers which are under it from the current layer, which means the curves layer. So if you take it, it hides the dark areas, but we wanna keep the shine of the coat. So we will just uh, do a little bit just like that. Just look at the coat, nowhere else. Hold the Alt or Option, click on it to separate it and Let's make sure we have the shine on the coat. Good, hit OK. Select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. Now all you want to do is just zoom in, take the brush with the foreground color white, press X again, and just paint on the coat. Now you can increase the flow if you want to. I'm gonna increase it to 100, just painting on the coat, just like so. See how much more shine it adds to it? 
looks good. Look at the shine. It looks much more realistic. So we can add a little here, there. Now it has leaked into her shirt. So we're gonna just erase it from there. Take black and just erase it from that. Okay, looks pretty good. Now we want to add a little shine over here as well on her shirt. So we're gonna decrease the flow to somewhere around 10% and we will just, just a little brightness, not shine, just a little bit of it. Okay, it looks pretty darn good. Now have a look, here's the before, here's the after. Looks amazing, doesn't it? So there we go, let's zoom out and have a complete look. Looks good. Now, as you can see, our image is pretty ready. Now, at the end, I'm gonna give you the same advice I give you all the time when it comes to effects like this. Take a break, eat something, drink a little coffee, tea, or whatever you like, cold drinks, soft drinks, no alcohol. Just do that and get back after a break, okay? Now, once you get back, look at it again, see what changes you need to make. Because once we are too engrossed into editing this photo, we just, our eyes get accustomed to it and we are not able to look at the mistakes that we might be doing. So let's have a look at it. Once I look back at it, I think the blue is too much. And that's why it is a smart object. You can always go back to lighting effects. We double click on there and the blue here, all we will do, we'll decrease the saturation of the blue. I think it was too saturated, okay? This is okay, and we will go to brightness and just decrease the brightness. Okay. This is good, hit okay. And once you're satisfied, hit okay again. And voila, you are done. So that's how to create an amazing light effect in Photoshop very easily by using light effects filter. Always keep in mind, all you need to do is to first make a copy of the background layer as we did right here. We made a copy of the background layer and then convert it into smart object, then add the light. After that, make a selection of the subject. You can turn this off, make a selection of the subject and using that selection, first of all, save the selection, do not forget it. Using that selection, create a new layer on top of it. We will create shadow on top of the subject to avoid some funny edges. Now, fill it with black, blur it and stretch it the way you like. Now you will use the previous selection of the subject that we made as a mask, okay? to take away the shadow from the subject. Now, after you have done that, just group it up. You can just create one more mask for the shadow group to add some more details to it, to remove or add it in some areas. Now, once we are done with the outer shadow, we cannot forget the inner shadows. And to do that, we simply created a curves adjustment layer. Now, the curves adjustment layer was saturating the areas we were darkening. So we added a hue saturation adjustment layer, decreased the saturation and created a clipping mask. And after that, we added one more curves adjustment layer to add some shine to the jacket. Always keep in mind, we have to create the outer shadow and then the inner shadow as well to make it look very realistic. Also, the hardness and the softness of the shadow will depend on the light. As you can have a look here, the light was a little harder here, so we had a little less blur. And as it got softer and blurry, we added more blur to the shadows and also it follows the same direction. Remember, we stretched it in this way, according to the curvature of light. Do not forget that. I hope this video helped you, and if it did, make sure to give us a like, and also don't forget to subscribe, and not just subscribe, ring the bell, or ring the bell, so that you don't miss any other feature tip, trick, or tutorial. Thank you so very much for watching this tutorial. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon, and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for all your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned, and make sure that you keep creating.